Now, what is state pattern? State pattern is a design pattern which allows us to change the behavior of an object when its internal state changes. Now, here you can see I have this image which I got it from this page, and uh, you can see here in this image which summarizes everything. We have these little states, and when state changes, state can be one, can be two, can be string, can be integer, can be any value. And if the state changes, it will also change the behavior of an object. And you can see this big box right here is an object, right? An object has a behavior. For example, it could run, it could walk, it could stop, it could do certain faces right for example you can see that if state changes it which affects the behavior of an object and this is what this pattern allows us to do now to understand why we need to use the state pattern let me show you a problem in code so here you can see we have a canvas class and this canvas class has a property called tool type which is an enum and you can see here this is the enum here we have three options selection brush eraser and here you can see based on the tool type for the mouse down based on the current state or the current tool type we will execute different behaviors for example if it's a selection we will do something related to mouse down selection if it's brush then we will do something for mouse down for brush and then if eraser then we're going to do something with mouse down eraser if it's other than that we will do the default condition and same thing for the mouse up as well and the reason why it's not maintainable here is because you can see here if i want to add additional option for example if i want to add circle or square right where you can be able to draw a square on the canvas then i also have to update both those functions in this case i don't want to do that but it's also not extendable because if i want to change or add another function have another functionality or another feature where you can be able to do key up right key down or pressing a certain keys or anything then in this case i also have to make sure to add these conditions to those function as well right push statements to the key up and key down function as well so in this case you can see it's not really maintainable and not extendable now to solve this problem what we can do is we can use the state pattern and this is what it looks like so here you can see we have our canvas class and inside of the canvas we have our property called current tool and this current tool is no longer going to be an enum, it's going to be an interface, which is going to be tool. Now, this is going to be an interface, and this interface has only two functions. It's going to be mouse down and mouse up. And for this interface, we have many behaviors. You can see we have many behaviors which implements this interface. We have selection, which implements this interface. You can see we have mouse down and mouse up. We also have brush, which also implements this interface. And you can see we have mouse down and mouse up, right? It has its own individual mouse down and mouse up. Each behavior is different. And what we can do here is that if I want to set or mouse down for selection, what I can do is I can have current tool, which is going to be interface of the tool, which is an interface tool. And uh, all we can do is we can set the current tool equal to an instance of selection. And then we can just call the mouse down inside of the canvas class. And let me show you this in code. Now here you can see this is the code solution for the state pattern implementation. You can see here we have our interface called iTool and this is an interface. We have two functions, mouse down and mouse up. And you can see we also have other behavior class which implements this interface. Now for this, we should use abstract class if we want to provide common code to the child class, right? You can see here, if I want to implement a function inside of interface, it's not possible. But for an abstract class, I can do that. I can be able to trade it as a class, but I cannot create an instance of that, but I can be able Able to implement a function inside of that abstract class and here you can see inside of our canvas class i have our current tool in this case it's going to be our property and i also have our mouse down and our mouse up now here you can see inside of our canvas class you can see here we have our property current tool which is a i interface and you can see we also have our current getter and setter and we also have our mouse down and mouse up feature and if i want to use the mouse down for the selection tool you know what i can do is i can inside let's say for example canvas class this is our main static function you know what i can do is i can create an instance of the selection tool for example selection tool is equal to new selection tool right I'm creating an instance of that and I say canvas. I also create an instance of the canvas, for example, something like this. And I'm also going to set the current state. I will say that dot current tool is equal to selection tool. And then once I set the current tool to be selection tool, I can call canvas dot mouse down. And I can also create a new instance, for example, brush tool. And I've set the current tool to be equal to the instance of a brush tool. And then I can also call the mouse down for that as well. And if I want to implement a new behavior, for example, eraser or drawing a circle, 
or drawing a square or whatever, right? I can create a new class, implement that behavior, implements the iTool interface. Since all of them are using the iTool interface, I can be able to create or call the mouse down, mouse up feature for those behaviors. Now, there are pros and cons for using this design pattern. Now, for the pros, one of them is single responsibility principle, which means that each class has only one responsibility. And the other one is open close principle, it means that we can add new state without changing the existing context. Now, say you can see here, we have our canvas class. Now, if I want to add a new feature, for example, circle or eraser or any other behavior, then I don't have to change anything inside of a canvas class, but I can still be able to add new features or extend new features, which is possible. Now for this advantage for using this pattern is that it will be overkill when we only have a few states. So let's say if I have an example of a stopwatch app, we know that for a stopwatch app, the features are only stop and start. Those are the two behavior or the state that we can have for this stopwatch. And in this case, if we know that these are the only two or the only few states that we're going to have for this application and we're using this pattern, it will be a really overkill because this pattern is meant to allow us to add new states or new behaviors in the future. But if we only have limited, then it will be beneficial to only use a if else statement or a switch condition inside of the stopwatch class.